Hello and welcome back to Superboy Beyond fans. Again, we're in another week of Spooktober. <laughs> so uh, this week uh, is our fourth week of Spooktober. Uh, first week was, uh, what was the first week we did? Oh, for the uh, man, for the man was everything. everything. Yeah. Um, and then second week we did uh, uh, Nothing Batman. to Fear from Batman the Animated Series. Indeed. Uh, last week we did Lois and Clark Never on Sunday, which was the first and only live action appearance of a classic Superman foe, Baron Sunday. And now this week we're going back to Batman the Animated Series with the creepiest House. episode. Yes, House and Garden. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so obviously last week, last year for Halloween, I think we watched all of the uh, horror-themed episodes of Superboy, so that's why this Halloween is just purely beyond. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was looking around, like trying to see, like what are the creepiest episodes from DC shows that aren't primarily like horror-based? Because I know there's been a few things that have a slightly darker tone, but I was looking for something that is primarily a light show but just has like a super dark episode. And this is one that according to like people on Reddit and stuff, like this is by far and away the creepiest episode of the show. And I don't have that many memories of it, to be honest. So I guess we'll see. But uh, yeah, looking forward to this one. So uh, there's, uh, for those of you who are just joining us for the first time, uh, there's going to be no clips of the episode in the in our episode here. You're going to get a heavily filtered version right up there in the middle. Um, and that's just so you can keep in track with us so that we're watching at the same time. Because we understand life happens. You got to run to the bathroom. You got to get a snack. A phone rings. Somebody comes to the door. So this will be able your way of keeping in track with us. Okay. So we're going to get you started in a few moments. Now, remember, um, you're going to have to have your own copy. So either use whatever you're streaming it on. I think it's on Max right now, I think. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can buy episodes on YouTube and Amazon, like if you want to pay out to basically buy yeah. it there. But uh, I'm fairly sure, though, that if um, if they remove it from those services and you don't have it downloaded, you lose it. Yes. So I personally, I would go with something else. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, uh, physical media where is always the best. Yeah, I mean, it's on Blu-ray. You can get it in HD on Blu-ray now, so that's probably the best way to do it. But, I mean, if you you know, if you know, don't have a Blu-ray player, the DVDs have got to be so cheap now that the Blu-ray's out. So <laughs> go, go get a second-hand yeah. DVD or something. Probably only get it for a couple of quid. Yeah. Yep. So uh, I'm going to count you in with a three, two, one. Yuck. <laughs> and we'll, you'll understand why I'm doing it like that. Um, so, get yourselves ready. This is Batman the Animated Series Season 2 Episode... What, what, episode? what episode? Episode 6. six. House and Garden. Three, two, one. Yuck! I miss when Bugs Bunny was at the start of all the animated Warner Brothers projects. Yeah, me too. That go away, you know. That was. I always thought it was such a nice touch when they did stuff like that. And again, such a great opening sequence. Yeah. Batmobile design heavily influenced by the uh, Tim Burton movies. Yeah. Although, you know, you can see there's definitely a few elements that came from Batman 66 as well. Especially in the toys. You can see it more in the toys because the way the top opens up, it almost turns into a convertible version of the car. At that point, it feels like the 60s version. Yeah. And just in terms of the shape, you know, it's very long and flat. And then it's just a little bat thing at the back. Yep. House and Garden by Paul Dini. And typically, you know, if it's written by Paul Dini, it's going to be good. I, I, I can't think of a single thing 
by Paul Dini that I didn't like, to be honest. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be something that I'll find one day because not every writer has a perfect track record. But yeah. So yeah, one of the plant creatures that poison ivy's made, I'm guessing. There was just all these little touches with this show that I just appreciate. Like the fact that they've actually got sort of that noir esque sort of light being cast from the like from the ceiling. The fact that you've got the shadows with the shapes like that. Little touches that, you know, they probably would have been fine if they didn't include. But the fact they did just shows how much care was being put in. Yeah. You know, every, everybody always talks about how great Kevin Conroy was, but, you know, very few people, you know, give Bob Hastings the credit that he's due as Commissioner oh, no. Gordon. He is phenomenal as Gordon. Did he continue doing the role for the Arkham games, or was that, did they replace him? Because I know they replaced I, a bunch of people. I think they replaced him. That's a shame. And then we have, uh, as Pamela Isley, a.k.a. Poison Ivy, the great Diane Pershing. Diane Pershing has, is a, uh, a, 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 a voice actress, very famous. She's She's been working since the 60s, I believe. I recognize the name, but I couldn't tell you anything that I know her from. Um, she was the voice of Dale Arden in uh, the uh, 1970s uh, Flash Gordon cartoon from uh, Filmation. Never saw that. And, and she essentially re reprised the role of Dale Arden in Defenders of the Earth. Hmm. And oh, the she gentleman had a bunch of voices in Fallout New Vegas, which is a game that I have played to absolute death. So, yeah, I, I definitely know her from that. Um, and I believe the gentleman who's playing her husband here is Peter Strauss. Hmm. Yeah, apparently, according to IMDb, she voiced Perry White's wife in uh, the Ruby Spears Superman. Yep. Did not know that. She's done like loads of things. Inspector Gadget, to real Ghostbusters, to Smurfs. Yeah. Basically, looking at her IMDb is just like a list of all these legendary children's shows. <laughs> The, the funny thing is that when when uh, Dini and Tim were talking about this show when they first launched it, mm. they said we don't want to get actual voice actors to do work on this. We want to get real actor actors, and yet some of the some of the greatest characters they have on here are done by voice actors. Yeah, I think they uh, came around to the idea pretty quickly. I mean, Pamela Isley is voiced by. Diane Pershing, famous voice actress. You've got uh, Robin, voiced by Lauren Lester. I don't believe you. <laughs> Crocodile tears. <laughs> And, you know, Dick Grayson's design, definitely based on Burt Ward. Oh, yeah. It is funny, as a kid, like, when I was very small, this show used to confuse the hell out of me because the only Batman I knew before this was the Adam West show. So I was watching it thinking that Alfred was Gordon and Gordon was Alfred. Granted, I was about four. 
But yeah, it was just so weird to me that Gordon in this show looks just like Alfred in the 60s and vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. I hope they bring back the blue in the bat suit for live action soon. Even if it's Flash. muted blue, you know, just bring back blue. Yeah. I mean, it was in the Flash movie. Batman's got the blue back in his suit, but uh, it is very muted. The Flash yeah. isn't a great movie, though, but it's still worth trying that thing again. I wouldn't even mind if they went even slightly more saturated than they did in that movie. So, yeah, these plant creatures sure are creepy looking, even in Shadow. I'm still trying to figure out why is this thing going <laughs> after this? Hmm. Unless the target was Dick's girlfriend for some reason. Mm. Oh. And for once, Bruce is wearing the the, uh, the brown suit with the yellow shirt. No tie. Mm. I love all the old style cars that they've got in this show as well. Mm. I wish cars still looked like this. I mean, I know they never quite looked exactly like this, but just that design. No. Great voice. I love all the uh, veins in the eyes as well. Really makes them look extra creepy. Probably the wrong person that you should be attacking. Yeah. I'm honestly amazed that the thing was able to get, you know, get the jump on Batman. He's usually a little bit more, uh, what's the word, perceptive than that. Yeah. And how can you miss a monster like that in your back seat? Yeah. Then again, you know, the fact that Dick is uh, missing. Mm. He's got a lot on his mind, I suppose. But yeah, I, I don't remember how this episode ends, but part of me wonders if the family is Plants two or something, something weird like that. Because honestly, I don't know if I'd ever trust poison ivy in a house with my kids. <laughs> you know, I certainly wouldn't want them eating anything she gave them. Yeah. It's always weird seeing Batman out in the day as well.
Yeah, it's it's kind of creepy watching Batman in the daytime. Yeah. If it's not in the 60s, it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> like, there's, if there's something wrong with this image, you know? It's like whenever you see a low-budget film about vampires and they're all well, walking around in daylight just because they couldn't afford to shoot at night. <laughs> and there's just something wrong. <laughs> hmm. Unless it's a Blade movie and it's only Blade himself that's walking around in the daylight. It just, yeah. Yeah, that thing is creepy as hell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like if somebody said, like, I'll basically just take the Incredible Hulk and just make him as creepy as you fucking can. <laughs> and mix him with a plant. Yeah. Yeah, that is so creepy. I can see why this was the episode that people said was the most horror themed. Because I'll be honest, you know, I wasn't expecting a, a Poison Ivy episode to be one of the ones we watch for Halloween. It's the mouth and the teeth, I think, that do it most. Yeah. See, I'm wondering if this is the husband or something, and like he's like a Jekyll and Hyde type thing. Because I genuinely I can't remember what this episode's plot is, but you'll I think find out. You'll find out. It's really, really, really disturbing. Yeah, I, I think the husband and the kids are the plant creatures somehow. You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, I think she's grown her own family somehow. Maybe the two kids are the monsters then. I know it was slightly uh, controversial when the show first came out, but I'm so glad they went with Tim Drake's costume instead of dick grayson's i think within this show i think just having him in the little green brief would have been <laughs> slightly jarring yeah tim drake's suit though especially the 90s comic book version by far my favorite robin suit Okay, that has very much, you know, alien vibes. Mm.
Yeah, she's making clone babies. They all say that, though, don't they? Every criminal that's ever been caught says, I'm going straight. You know, every yeah. single one. Yeah, but they always seem to leave out the last part of that statement, which is, I'm going straight back to crime. I'm going straight right after this one last job. Yeah. Yeah, this is so creepy. I can see why people on Reddit say this is the best one to watch at Halloween. Hmm. Man, that thing is creepy. Even just the fact that it melts at the end is creepy. Like, Paul Dini was cooking with this one. Oh, yeah. I mean, if all she wanted was a family, if she wasn't using it, to kill up people, you know, and try to blackmail money out of them or whatever. Yeah, so creepy. I can't remember what Poison Ivy's design changed to, but I'm sure she's one of the ones that changed as well. Uh, they made her skin very pale white. Oh, yeah. And she's in a black suit almost as well. Yeah. Instead of the green. I don't know. I know they had to change basically every design a certain amount in order to uh, get this second show working because if, the, if if it was too close to the first one apparently it was like legal troubles or whatever because it was still copyright to a different network but i don't know they, they must have been better designs than that mm. joker's design when they redid it was awful It was better for the uh, Batman Beyond movie, though, Return of the Joker. They definitely improved on it by then. I'm melting. Ah, so it's not even Ivy. It's not this one, is it? Is Ivy? Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing she gets away then by the end of this episode. Catch mm -hmm. you next time.
Yeah, I do feel slightly bad for her, but I mean, the fact is she had that family and then she started using them to kill people and, you know, extort money from people. Club, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you know, if you were truly happy with that life, you wouldn't have needed the crime, surely. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, Batman said, I doubt we'll see her again for quite some time. I would be interested to know how many episodes it takes for her to come back. Yeah, I don't recall. That's the thing. No, I couldn't tell you. It's been years since I've seen that episode. Um, mm. So, yeah, that was House and Garden and just a very, very creepy episode. Yes. Even mm. just conceptually, you know, just the whole I just the ideas it was playing with were creepy. Yeah, just phenomenal. Yeah. And just the designs on the, on the creature. Ooh. Yeah, the way the mouth sort of stretches down, that was so creepy. And the way the teeth were in there. And yeah. Just super, super creepy. Yeah. <laughs> I may have to watch that one again a little bit sooner than the last time. I think maybe I'll watch it again next year for Halloween, just not as part of the channel. I'll just watch it for fun. <laughs> but uh, I don't have anything else to say on this episode. That I Neither do I. Anything. Neither do I. I think this is one of those ones that the episode speaks for itself. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you next time, where we'll be going back to Superboy, I think. Actually, maybe it was a Ruby Spears. I don't know. We had a bunch of episodes recorded before Halloween month started. So it's yeah. whatever episode is next on the schedule after that. So uh, Yeah, so there's going to be a little bit of a shift between episodes. You're going to see me with longer hair and then shorter hair and then longer hair. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed Spooktober for this, this year. Um, we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Yeah. Oh, same back time, same back channel, I guess. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>